Good Monday to you, friends. We're going to start with a couple of minutes of instrumental music so that folks have time to get logged in. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome to the Daily Update. From where I'm sitting in my upstairs bedroom, I can look across the street and see my neighbor's beautiful pink dogwood tree. Do you know how I know it's a dogwood tree? Because of its bark. I also uh, went to the grocery store this morning and bought some milk. Milk is the fastest beverage. It's past your eyes before you even know it. Let's move on to the news. Enough of that. A reminder that I will be reading the second chapter of the Adam Hamilton book, 24 Hours That Changed the World. I read the first chapter last night. That'll be at 8. It won't be immediately following this, which will probably be 7.20 or so. It'll be at 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock, tune in. If you've got 25 or 30 minutes, then we'll continue the book, 24 Hours That Changed the World, about the last 24 hours of Christ's life in this world. This coming Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, rather than the regular update, we're going to have a Maundy Thursday service online. It'll be different. Um, we're going to do a love feast, not a Moravian love feast with coffee and rolls. It'll be an old-fashioned Methodist love feast, not Holy Communion. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, and I'll remind you tomorrow night as well, is to have some bread Maybe have some cheese or grapes, something to drink, not wine, because it's not Holy Communion, and we will we will say a prayer over that. And we may have a way to interact more than we do so now. I'm talking with Doug Harwood about ways that we might be able to interact with one another during the love feast, because it's supposed to be a time of testimony and witness. But we'll do that this coming Thursday night for Maundy Thursday. Don't know what's going to happen on Good Friday. We do have the possibility of airing a service that we did last year. Don't know if we'll be able to do that, but I would like to do that. Easter sunrise will be at 645. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I, I've been thinking about simply getting out and walking around my beautiful neighborhood and doing something while I walked. Um, and maybe you could do the same. Get out of your house and go out and see the sunrise, and we'll all do it together outside where we are. And then Easter, we'll have a service at 11 o'clock, and we're trying again to put more music uh, in the service. It would be nice to know if you liked the service this past Sunday. Did you think that that was a good way to do it with pre-recorded messages and music uh, put together by Doug Harwood in a video? I liked it. Um, I thought it looked more worshipful than what we've been doing, but uh, you let me know or let Doug know what changes you might like to see, and we may be able to do that. But that is the news for the day. Some updates now.
We have um, four people affiliated with our congregation that I'm aware of in the hospital. One is an unspoken concern, someone who will have to be in the hospital probably another week to 10 days. Um, they're uh, having some trouble. Norman Willie is at Wake Med Carey. As far as I know, I haven't heard that he's gone home. Irvin Tabler, uh, Roberta Tabler's husband, is still at um, uh, Wake Med Raleigh. I think he's out of the ICU unit. He is doing some better. Did not have coronavirus, by the way. And Glenda Johnson continues to be at Rex and uh, would cover your prayers. Would also like to give thanks that Rebecca Sandell uh, only has the flu. She thought it was worse, and that's a crazy thing to say, isn't it? But she's recovering from the flu, and we pray for her complete recovery. Um, we want to lift up the pastors at Midway Baptist, one of our neighboring churches right up Highway 401. Uh, the senior pastor, Grant Staubs, and the associate pastor, Craig Dyson, both have coronavirus or are hospitalized in Raleigh. So we pray for them and their families and for our brothers and sisters at Midway Baptist Church. I also want to lift up a personal friend, Lee Abel. Lee is a veteran of three, war three wars, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. One of the finest men I've ever known. Lee has entered into hospice care in Goldsboro, and we want to lift him up. We want to lift this world up, folks. I looked at the statistics just before I came on. 1.3 million people now confirmed with coronavirus across the globe. 74,000 died at this point. In the United States, 364,000 with coronavirus confirmed and 11,000 have died, including 33 in North Carolina. Um, but how I, I did read on uh, Twitter, uh, Senator Jeff Jackson, said that if we continue to socially distance the way that we are, we are flattening the curve in North Carolina. We are going to be just a little short of ICU beds by the end of the month, but nothing like New York or New Orleans or Italy. So we've got to keep doing this and doing it right if we want to give our healthcare system a chance to keep up. So keep doing the good work of staying home. That is the way that you can love one another now, not by coming together, but by staying apart. We want to also lift up the Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain, uh, Boris Johnson, who went from hospital to intensive care today with coronavirus. So we lift up him, we lift up his family, and we lift up our brothers and sisters over across the, across the pond in the United Kingdom. I ask again if you know of people that have needs, if they need food, if they need medicine, um, uh, to please let me know at rvspivey314 at gmail.com. Or let Elaine, uh, J Elaine Jenkins know, our nurture coordinator, epjteach at gmail.com, and we'll do what we can to help folks. I want to uh, read a reflection this evening from Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg called God is Not in Quarantine. And I think, try to interpret that properly. It doesn't mean God is not with us. It means God's not quarantined. God is still out in the world everywhere. But let me read it for you. It's a nice piece of wisdom. Experts are guiding us that the key to slowing down, if not stopping the spread of this virus, is social distancing, a term and a practice that should be an anathema to us. We generally draw strength from togetherness and unity, and yet during these extraordinary times, the best way to show that we're together is to be willing to remain apart. However, while we are distancing, God is breaking quarantine everywhere. In difficult moments and crises like these, we have a choice to make. We can focus on this virus those it has struck and wonder where is God, or we can look at how we are collectively responding, keep an eye on the extraordinary things that are happening and find God everywhere. God is found through his heroic angels, the doctors and nurses and custodians caring for people in hospitals and nursing homes. He's found throughout the network of special volunteers, his angels who are eager to check in on the homebound and deliver provisions to the vulnerable. You can see him through the generosity of those angels digging deep into their own pockets to ensure that those hit hardest can continue to be safe and taken care of. And I would add, he's with those people who are out there in the stores and in the restaurants, still out in public working and being exposed to all of this. These acts of kindness, this attitude of cooperation and collaboration, these gestures of selflessness are indeed expressions of godliness, come from the Spirit of God that is found within each and every one of us. God is also found in the blessings he continues to bestow upon us, even during these challenging times. He can be found through the technology which enables us to remain in touch, 
to video conference hundreds around the world. It can be found through apps, websites, and emails that empower us to continue learning scripture and to pray together, to sing together, to prepare for worship together, and to learn how to prepare for Easter together. He had Passover up at Easter. Make no mistake, even during this outbreak, God can still be found in the rising and the setting of the sun, in the beautiful trees and plants, in the intricate ordinary functions of the human body. Indeed, God can be found in literally each and every breath that we take. The book of Psalms concludes with the sentence, Kol ha neshama to halel ka, every soul must praise God. Our rabbis in the Midrash Rabbah tell us, don't read it as kol ha neshama, every soul, but kol ha neshama, with each breath, we must praise God. Rav Chaim Kineski explains that as long as a person has breath in his lungs, as long as we can still speak, we must never stop recognizing God everywhere and we must continuously praise God. The Chasam Sofer has a beautiful and particular timely explanation. He says, Kol Haneshema means praise God not with every breath, but because of every breath we take. A healthy person breathes 12 to 20 times a minute and doesn't think about it even once. Breathing is a natural, automated action. We take it for granted and not only expect the next breath to come, we don't even think about it. And yet there are countless factors, intricate mechanics that are necessary for each breath we take. The coronavirus attacks the respiratory system. It makes it difficult for those who have it to breathe, even forcing some to be placed on a breathing machine, a ventilator. This virus should remind us that there's nothing ordinary, predictable, or expected about breathing. We aren't entitled to this great gift and blessing, and so kol haneshema, with each and every breath we take, we should acknowledge, thank, and sing praise to God. God is not quarantined. God is not distancing himself from any of us. In fact, he can be found all around us through his angels, through the blessings we receive, and through each breath we take. While physically distancing is what is necessary to remain safe, drawing close to God at this time is what we need to not only survive, but to thrive spiritually. God doesn't quarantine. God never needs a hazmat suit, and being near God doesn't pose a threat or danger. You can shake God's hand and lean in to feel God's hug, welcoming God's embrace. As we work to stop coronavirus, let's make a concerted effort to pay attention to God all around us, within us, and through us. Let's be his angels to help others. Let's pause to thank him for the blessings we have, and let's pray with all our concentration and might that God bring only good, health, and safety for all of us. Let us pray. God of all hope, we call on you today. We pray for those who are living in fear right now, fear of being sick, fear of their loved ones being sick, fear of whether or not they're doing the right things to help. May your spirit bring to us a sense of calmness and peace. We pray for those who struggle in this time of uncertainty, for people who are worried about whether or not they should go out, for people who have to work and are worried they're going to be exposed to the virus because of their work, for people who need to make difficult decisions about how to take care of loved ones in a time of separation, for those who feel isolated and cut off from the rest of the world. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters in our own congregation who feel isolated from their church family. Grant us your wisdom and help us to find new and creative ways to stay connected to each other. Almighty God, today is our day to lift up those in the medical and science professions. We pray for those who even now are working on effective treatments for this terrible disease, treatments that will stop the virus, treatments that will help preserve the health of our respiratory systems. We pray for those who are being creative in the engineering fields and are coming up with ways of quickly building res uh, respirators and ventilators, of turning CPAP machines and ventilators, of those who are 3D printing masks and other equipment. We thank God for that beautiful way of thinking outside the box. Speed this up, Lord. Send all the resources that these folks need and continue to keep them strong and smart and make way for these things to come to us and to those around the world who so desperately need them. Holy God, we remember that you've promised that nothing will separate us from your love. 
demonstrated to us through Jesus Christ. Help us turn our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to you always. Amen. Remember, I'll see you again at 8 o'clock. Adam Hamilton and I will see you. If I don't see you then, good night and a better tomorrow to you. God bless.